G'day folks, welcome to Pammy's Peck of Pursuits, and welcome to week three of my three reverse challenge. Love it if you would like and subscribe and follow me as I go along. First morning we had some tea and toast on the deck in the sunshine, along with some, um, some dried mango that I did a little while ago. It was a beautiful sunny morning after an incredibly stormy night, so we really just enjoyed sitting on the deck in the sunshine. And we did the same thing at lunch with some toasted sandwiches with cheese, tomato, and salami. And again, enjoyed just looking over the garden. For dinner, we had salmon patties. Um, I've, I'll put the recipe down below. I just mixed some salmon, some eggs, um, an onion, and mixed those together. I used a 400 gram tin of salmon, um, and then a half a cup of panko crumb crumbs with some herbs, half a cup of potato flakes, and salt, pepper, and celery salt. And looking back, there was way too much salt. I should have just used the pepper and the celery salt. But mixed them all up and made, I believe, seven patties. Um, from the 400 gram tin. And got those all, all ready for, for dinner. Um, I heated up, while I was making them, I just heated up my cast iron pan, and when it was hot, I popped them in, just a little bit of olive oil, and let them brown on one side, and flipped them over. And we, we served those with some salad from the garden, and it was a lovely dinner. And, oh yes, I found a jar of pickles in the fridge, so started going through the jar of pickles, too. And the next morning, I was out in my garden, and I realized that my mint bush needed a severe haircut. So I did that, I ended up with a full basket of mint leaves, which in turn went into the, um, into the dehot, that was my, that's the mint bush after the haircut, <laughs> um, into the dehydrator, and um, it made actually quite a lot. I got um, almost a full jar of mint flakes. So that went into the pantry. I do like having my herbs on the deck so that I can keep them topped up. I had to make some bread this day because we were out. So I made three loaves of bread um, and ended up with four extra rolls which I sent next door to my neighbor. And uh, it was quite delicious. Um, for dinner, we had white chili, white chicken chili. I used some chicken from the freezer. I used some cream cheese and grated cheese from the fridge. I used cannellini beans from the pantry and spices and rice and corn chips. So I actually got through quite a few things. I mixed up the chili and popped the rice in the microwave in my Tupperware rice cooker, which I absolutely love. One of the few things of Tupperware that I actually have and use on a regular basis. So I just popped some rice into the bowls and topped it with some of my white chili and put some corn chips on the side and that was dinner for 
day two. Now, on this day, I actually was gi gifted some goat meat, so I took that and I used my new food saver that I got for Christmas and vacuum packed that goat meat and popped that back into the freezer. We'll use that at a later date. Um, it was a real treat to be given that. Now the next day we were having a dinner at the church. We do a community meal at our church for people that are less fortunate than others. And this night we were expecting to serve about 40 people. So I was asked if I could make some dessert. So I grabbed two one gallon bags of strawberries out of the freezer and um, uh, some rhubarb from the garden and put that together with a bit of sugar and some spices and vanilla mixed that all up and put that in a large baking dish fortunately I put it on a baking sheet I added some some um, cornstarch in with some strawberry juice just to make sure that that thickened a little bit but when I put I put it in on a on a bit on a sheet on a baking sheet which was a good idea because it did overflow and I would have had a very sticky oven otherwise so that the two gallon bags of um, strawberries and the rhubarb filled that large baking tray and then I went ahead and made some crumble topping for that with oatmeal and I added um, some brown sugar to the oatmeal and then I added um, some spices I like lots of cinnamon and some cloves and a little bit of nutmeg to give it a bit of flavor and I do like my cinnamon I'm of the persuasion that you can never have too much cinnamon so I put about two tablespoons of cinnamon in with my oatmeal mixture and mix that all together with the oatmeal, the brown sugar, and all of the spices. I mixed that all up and then I added Um, I melted some butter in the uh, in the microwave and poured that melted butter in and stirred that up and made a huge bowl of crumble topping. Now, as far as I'm concerned, the fruit's really nice in a fruit crumble, but it's the crumble topping that really is the... Uh, the winner there so I just used I had a I filled that baking dish with the strawberry rhubarb mixture and then just topped it off with a good amount of crumble topping and popped that into the oven now I made another one with a couple of tins of peaches and a couple of tins of I drained a couple of tins of peaches from the pantry and I drained the juice off of a couple of tins of pineapple and chopped that up and added that. I didn't waste the juice. I had that chilled and I had that for a nice drink later on in the afternoon. Um, so it's got peaches and pineapple and then I had some tins of passion fruit pulp 
and I mixed that around and basically made a tropical crumble. Topped that all off with the... So that night we ate down at the church and every bit of those two crumbles were gone at the end of the evening, which was a great result. And the next night we actually went out for dinner and to the theater and saw a great show. We saw Greece with my girlfriend's uh, niece in and that was just a great night out with great company and we enjoyed that thoroughly. The next night I had a clean out in the fridge and grabbed a couple of zucchini from the garden and some carrots, some garlic and some onions and cooked that through and added a couple of tablespoons of mushroom powder that I had in the pantry just to give it a little bit of extra flavor and I stirred that around and then I then we um, did I do <laughs> sorry I added a jar one of the last jars of my spaghetti sauce that I have in the pantry so I'm looking forward to getting some tomatoes this year to make some more so I added that jar of pasta sauce in and cooked that around and put some pasta on to cook and we had a lovely dinner of vegetarian spaghetti and we topped it we did top it with a bit of uh, parmesan cheese from the fridge and there was a bit extra for the next day for lunch um, that night I made some muesli because we were all out and that is what my husband likes most for breakfast so I cooked cooked up some muesli and I chopped up some of my dried apples strawberries and mango and put in a bit of coconut and half of it half of the muesli that I baked I put in with the fruit and the other half I left plain with just a bit of extra toasted coconut on top so now we're good for muesli for the next couple of weeks and the next day we had the usual breakfast of tea and toast and I was able to slice one of my beautiful Duke tomatoes and have a cheese and tomato sandwich for lunch. I'm glad that my tomatoes are starting to ripen. It's taken a while but we'll get there. On day six I had a dig through the freezer and pulled out a bag of strawberries, some butter, some chicken stock and a couple of packets of frozen cooked chicken from our trip to Costco and we put together a birthday meal for my brother-in-law we had a chicken pot pie and that turned out absolutely delicious with vegetables and the chicken and the pastry I was very pleased with it I made the gravy with a gravy mix that I found online and I also used those strawberries to make a strawberry pie for dessert since it was his birthday and that was one of the best strawberry pies I've ever made it was really lovely very proud of it um, and then on day seven we did the usual for lunch and breakfast and for dinner I pulled out some sausages from the freezer and a bag of chips and we did the sausages on the barbecue and had it with chips and a salad this is my friendly little spider in between two of my tomato plants that I just leave alone she's quite pretty and I don't mind spiders when they're out in the garden I just don't like them in my house over the last three weeks I have been keeping a running tab of what I've been using from my pantry, my freezer, and my fridge. 
and and challenging myself to not head out to the supermarket every time I think, oh, I need this and I need that. I really have found that I don't need much at all. So I've only bought milk and a couple of things, mostly dairy products. And uh, I was out of potatoes, so I had to buy them. But thanks for watching my week three of my pantry challenge. And I look forward to joining you again for week four. It's been good trying some new recipes and sticking with some old faithfuls. I'm really enjoying the challenge this year. I half-heartedly did it a bit last June when Jessica had one in the middle of the year. But this time I have committed and am fully committed to getting through the six weeks that I have planned. So thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you've liked this video and if you want to keep um, keep up with us for the next few weeks while we finish things off. Um, thanks very much for watching. Like and subscribe and we will see you next week. Thanks very much. Bye.